It's time for what's trending. Joining us now is Archie, Archie Nika, Junixo, with story trending <laughs> around <much>. the world. <laughs> you did better than yesterday for sure. How Chief. are you? Chief, okay, Lolo. Lolo, Lolo, Umukwata. Umukwata. <laughs> Why do you come with this man? You've been with him all I day. Know him I know. Good morning, all right. How are you? Good morning, Ayo. How are you this good, morning? Good, good. We're missing Dr. Bart. Yes, we are. He'll be back Dr. soon. Viewers, he'll be back soon. No Let's worries see. about that at all. Well, all right. Good morning to you, viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In Nigeria, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu arrived in Medjugorje the Bono State Capitol on Monday for the Chief of Army Staff Annual Conference. The conference with the theme, Personal Motivation for Effective Operational Performance in Joint Environment, will discuss how best to improve the working conditions of military officers. The President expressed sadness over the bombing mishap by the Army that killed 84 persons in Kaduna State. It is severely painful to see harm befalling those whom we have sworn to protect. Such incidents must be thoroughly investigated. Then, it was a big day for Nigeria under sports as Super Eagles and Napoli striker Victor Oshiman on Monday won the CAF Player of the Year award in Marrakesh, Morocco after an outstanding season in which he led the Italian side to its first league title in 33 years. It was a history-making moment for the 24-year-old striker as he became the first Nigerian man to win the CAF Awards since 1999 when Kanu Nwankwo won the second of his two awards. The honor capped a superlative year for the striker who also took Nigeria to the 2023 Africa Cup of Nations with 10 goals to finish as the top scorer of the qualifiers. In the women's category, 29-year-old Super Falcon striker Asisha Osola was crowned the CAF Women's Player of the Year. The triumph is Osola's sixth time winning the award, pulling Claire as the footballer with the most wins. Chiamaka Nadozie also won the Women's Goalkeeper of the Year prize and the Super Falcons of Nigeria were named the Women's Best National Team on the continent. If we don't support ourselves, nobody will come down to Africa, nobody will come to this continent to support us. We have to work together as a team because football is a team sport. Let's start at home and go to the world and conquer it. Thank you very much and God bless everyone. Finally, on our entertainment, Grammy Award winning singer Whiskey on Monday announced a 100 million Naira Christmas donation to children in his neighborhood of Suruleri, Lagos, and its immediate environs. The 33 year old star who lost his mother, J.M. Balogun, in August this year said he is making the donation in her honor. An amateur video on social media showed the moment the singer arrived his community in Suruleri sharing words of Naira notes. Congratulations, big wig, big whiz. That's yes. what they call him, right? Yes. Fantastic. I mean, Christmas is around the corner. What else do we need now than to cheer people up? And he went straight to his community. I love, love this act. We see these entertainers continue to give. They make us proud and they give. We're calling on all the private sector yes. to follow his footsteps. But of course, we also have to congratulate Asisato Shola. Victor Simon yeah. and the Super Falcons of Nigeria becoming the best team on the African continent. Congratulations to all of them. Well, all right, let's continue on what's trending. On Monday, 
Social media was awash with reactions following the sudden decision of 27 lawmakers of the Rivers House of Assembly who decamped from the People's Democratic Party to join the All Progressives Congress. The lawmakers, said to be loyal to the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Yusam Wike, held a plenary session where the decision was taken amid tight security at the entrance of the Assembly complex in Port Harcourt, the River State Capital. <laughs> I told you this is uh, Wicked's new song. I told yeah. you it was uh, on your Monday, Bola, and now Jagabano. That I'm video that we played it. last week showed us that Wicked is in charge of the new song. While the defection of the lawmakers, according to reports, is said to be connected to the rift between the governor of River State, Sim Fubara, and Wike over control of the political structure in the state, while users on social media reacting to the lawmakers' defection pulled up an old video where we can condemn defectors in political parties. Everybody will have to be careful. You give somebody an umbrella, the next day, he, he, he defects. The EFCC will come, he said, no, let me join them. So EFCC will not be against you. You carry the vote of another party, and you join another party. Can you transfer vote? You work hard for somebody to win the election. Tomorrow the person says, no, I have defected. If you are defecting, leave the seat. If you know it, it's easy. A week is trending. Another old video showing you some week condemning the all progressive Congress of our failed leadership also made the rounds on social media. Well, let's take a look before we take some reactions. When I hear people declaring for APC, saying that they want to continue the good job of Mr. President, the good job of people dying every day, the good job of Naira falling every day. I feel so ashamed that we have gone to the level where sacrificing people will come and say, look, I want to continue the good job of Buhari. What is the good job of Buhari? Of hunger is a good job. Of poverty is a good job. Of insecurity is a good job. Of the economy falling is a good job. It's such a shameful thing. I, I can't believe that somebody will come out in today's Nigeria and say, I want to continue where Mr. Buhari has stopped. May God forgive. May God never allow that people to continue. Oh, my God is listening. Well, let's take some tweets. Uh, let's take this tweet from Oloye, who wrote, Weak is many lies. One, I will not be minister. I will not support whoever emerges at the PDP presidential elections. I can never leave malaria and join APC cancer. I will never disturb Sim when I hand over power to him. You cannot decamp with another party's votes. And many, many more. <laughs> Rafaya, laughing, laughing. Go ahead. <laughs> I mean, which installation is this? The only thing is now, we don't, I mean, when is Wike going to decamp? This is the question no, now. No, no, I don't so know. Is, I, is, is I it, think, you don't I know what at this PDA rate, okay. at this rate, uh, he has done more than possible <laughs> that you already know is with the APC. Yeah. Okay. I mean, there was a man that worked against his party. Yeah. When he was governor, he said Completely. the party couldn't hold a rally, presidential rally in his state. Yeah. So how else would you want? But, you know, he likes to be very, you know, amorphous or mercurial is the word, uh -huh. you know. So he's a member of the PDP. We're serving in an APC government. He said APC, yeah. he claimed he will never have anything because it's cancer. Yeah. Hope he knows that uh, Bola Tinubu's presidency is a, said he will continue Buhari's legacy. That's what he said. So that's he's continuing that. that legacy of cancer now mm -hmm. and he's enjoying it. And that's the thing about politicians. When he favors them, they'll say something. When he's against them, they'll say otherwise. So he's continuing that legacy. He's become a minister now. And, you know, he's destroying his own party, the PDP. But I think what is happening here is the fact that he knows that the game is tight for him now. He's no longer governor of the state. He doesn't wield a lot of that power, executive power in the state. And probably President Tinubu would like to work with Fubara. Hmm. So as he discovered that, he says, 
what can I do? So probably he went to get his lawmakers to defect to the APC so that he would show loyalty to President Tinubu and try to block any attempt at doing that. But let us see. This game will be incumbent on what, Mr. Fubara? Because this is another game of throws. Yeah. This game will be incumbent on the political understanding of Mr. Fubara and what game he will play in return. And in the coming days, you will see action. Because there's going to be a move, I probably will predict, on impeachment again, and let's see how it will pan out. But the part of this game that is not clear is the fact that Mr. Fubara is not aligning with some of the people in the PDP that are key stakeholders. And I've not seen that alignment, mm. you know, the likes of the Lee Meabas of this world and a couple of other people. We've not seen that alignment, you know, among him and the great PDP folk. But probably if that alignment happens, then at first they will start by ensuring that they push the case in court. Probably these lawmakers will be able to, some of them will be able to lose as if they can prove it in court and INE can organize by election. And this might be the first step in him asserting. But also, you can't take it away from Wiki. Wiki that could pull such a stunt in a state that he's no longer there with a lot of political power. And that's when a lot of people say that, he's valueless. No, that's exactly what I said. He's been Nobody able to turn everybody around. Yeah, absolutely. You know, on their heels. Mm -hmm. And that's why everybody is careful with him. Yeah. Look at leading up to the election. He kept on decimating the PDP, and PDP could not say anything. Yeah. It was 4 0. That's how the PDP came out to say that, oh, Wiki and his cohort of five governors will not do anything. But they disturbed the chance of the PDP. You can't take that away. Yeah. So let's see the political gravitas at which Fubara is going to fight. But Fubara is in a big cul-de-sac. Another scenario I'd like to posit will be endgame scenario, where Fubara will likely come out to tell us why the EFCC was chasing him when he was governor, when he was part of the Wiki cabinet, what does he have to do? But I pretty much doubt that Fubara will go to that extent because that, in that case, everybody will go down. Absolutely. So I pretty much doubt that scenario. But they will fight back. Mm -hmm. I've started to take polls online of who will win this weekend and Fubara fight. A lot of people. Are you doing that? Oh, yes. Yeah, so okay. I started yesterday night. Going? This How is Game of Thrones. So ah, based on my Twitter, <laughs> what's, what's the number, what's seven, the about 74% is saying Fubara will win. 23% okay. is saying Wiki. But based on my deep understanding of politics, mm -hmm. maybe if they would teach Fubara how to fight Wiki, Wiki has a better grasp of this. Well, all right. He's played this game before with Amechi. Uh -huh. And he knows he has a better grasp. And he has the arsenal of money. But Fubara might spring a surprise. Right. But it's a fight for survival. It's just like your motor park garage fight. If Fubara wins this fight, he's the new king Dominant. in town. Right. That's right. It's like the slum king that is currently showing on TV fights. All right. Uh, Ayo, right now, you know, the PDP is calling for fresh elections <laughs> in River State, saying that the 27 seats have become vacant really quickly. So we I can... must say that I'm quite disappointed at the, at the PDP's response. Mm -hmm. Very weak, very, um, very tempered. What we had mentioned, I, I believe that this is even beyond the Wiki Fubara fight. I think it's Wiki presenting an open challenge to the PDP, which he, he has consistently done since the G5, creation of G5, and his direct opposition of his own party. Now he's in Abuja, and he is flaunting his alliance with President Tinubu and, of course, the APC. And so the response from Mr. Debo Logwagba, you know, one of the spokespersons of the, of the PDP, is quite interesting. Why? So the big question, what has um, um, Mr. Uyansun Wike got on PDP that has made them cower? In fact, what I believe this action has done is to expose the weakness of the PDP. And so the, it begs the question as to, are they still the main opposition party? Has that power shifted from them to other parties like the Labour Party, NNPP and, and the likes? And then what is going on in PDP? Is, the, is it still standing as a party? So I believe that these actions with the PDP's response that's almost next to just accepting, you know, go, um, former governor we case I trust you know, in their own in their own anti-party activities again and again. And the more he does it, the worse it becomes. Twenty-seven lawmakers in one day. Mm -hmm. It's not just an affront to PDP in the River State, it's an affront to PDP as a whole across Nigeria. Now the lawyers earlier on explained the position of them saying that the, the you know the um, there was vacant section 109 of section 1G. We've quoted that a number of times of the 1999 constitution about the fact that if you defect from a party, you vacate that seat. But there's a clause which Rufai had brought out, which mm -hmm. is that if the party is said to be divisive, or there's division in the party, then they might have a case to answer. So right. let's see how that will play out in court. The saga 
continues. Oh, yeah, well, all right, we'll take another story. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, who is in my degree, for the 2023 Chief of Army Staff Annual Conference, commissioned 107 gas and electric powered buses and taxis in Borno State. As the governor of the state, Babagana Zulum seeks to cushion the impact of the fuel subsidy removal. The vehicles are made up of 57 units of gas powered buses and 50 units of electric powered taxi cabs. Tinibu thanked the governor for his proactiveness, stating that his administration will take advantage of his foresight at the sub national level to start an assembly plant in order to bring economic prosperity to Nigerians. I mean, this is amazing. I, you know, I always praise uh, Babagana Zulum. I mean, he's doing so well. Yes. And when they do well, we praise them. Yes, yes, yes. Well, despite the recent setback of the bombing incident in Kaduna State, the Nigerian military has remained relentless in his quest to hunt and eliminate terrorists across the country. The latest being the bombing of a cell led by the notorious Yellow Jambros in Niger State. The Air Force said the air component of Operation World Punch killed Jambros and other terrorists on Wednesday last week in airstrikes while they were attempting to cross the Jikunda River in Shirora local government area of the North Central State. Well, according to the Air Force spokesman, Jambros and his gang were trailed from Zamfara State as they traveled on motorbikes in broad daylight into Niger State. I mean, when I saw that footage, I was like, kudos, really kudos. So, you know, these terrorists, they thought that because of the bombing in Kaduna, the airstrikes had ceased. Yeah. But you know, the Nigerian Air Force continued. They have done us really proud. Congratulations. These terrorists have been terrorizing the North Central area, and we are so happy. Well, all right. Let's take another story. The national grid on Monday experienced another collapse, throwing the country into darkness. According to the transmission company of Nigeria, the grid collapsed at about 1 p.m. on Monday. It is the third time in recent months that the national grid has collapsed. I mean, we are hearing from TCN that this has to do with some sort of vandalism. But you know, the same thing happened in Kenya. A power blackout plunged the country into darkness on Sunday. The transport minister blamed the incident on possible act of sabotage. The outrage disrupted several services, including the main airport in the capital, Nairobi, where two terminals were without power for several hours. Many Kenyans have demanded answers as anger and frustration mounts over the recurring power disruption. While I catch my breath really quickly, Rufai, I'd yeah. like your thoughts on okay. this power grid and you know why they keep failing us. Okay. Is it I third mean, time this so year? Our Twice grid, in September. Our power grid, we all, we all know mm -hmm. the problem is, you know, equipment as regards what's even the currency of some sort of the power grid, how modern is it? Can it take what we have coming in, you know, We've been talking about rejigging the grid. If you look at part of the diesel of the Siemens deal, there's a lot of work that has to also be done with distribution and all of that of the power system and all of that. So these are part of the problems. Yeah, people are also talking about vendors and all of that. But really, we need to work on the grid. Yeah. Because most of this, you know, companies that provide the generating companies, they provide electricity and they get out there, you know, to the people and they load it up on the grid, then through the grid system, people get the electricity, then the distribution companies just go out there to mop up you know, their monies and things like that. So pretty much three arms of it. We need to be able to reject the grid properly. I've also always favored a multi-grid system where you don't have one big grid. You have multiple regional grids that can equally do the work. Mm -hmm. that's, that's about the power sector. And also in Kenya, you know, them having their challenge. You know, it's quite novel because it, it had you, you, you don't get as much frequency of problems like that as in Nigeria. That's yeah. why it's quite novel, mm -hmm. you know, in Kenya. So the power system is still pretty much, you know, yes. uh, a whole lot better. But as regards President, you know, we're going to commission uh, what Babagana Zulu did. Kudos to Babagana Zulu. Kudos yes, also absolutely. to our, our Air Force, you know, for striking down the terrorists. We support them when they do well. Mm -hmm. But I'd like to ask all of these CNG bosses, Oji, do you have people that have driven in any of them or that have, that, have, that have gone in any of them? So these are the questions we keep asking ourselves in society. Mm -hmm. And where are we as regards the presidential CNG plan that will make it easy for you to be able to go into any filling station and buy your CNG gas into your CNG powered cars? Mm -hmm. Because full adoption is the order of the day. And also, at the presidential, when he was announcing the palliative, he talked about farms, yes. you know, for us to plant hectares and hectares of farm across states of the country. 
where are those food that we ought to grow now to be able to cushion this burden? Well, they are doing very well, and we'll yeah. praise them when they do well. And we're seeing that Babagana Zulum has done so well. Well, we're talking about the discos, even just helping out with the you know, TCN and powering them. We'll take our final story. The chairman of Airs Holdings and Transcop Group, Tony Alumelu, visited the Transcop power plant Ugeli in Delta State as they commemorated a decade of powering growth, the philanthropist in a post on Instagram shared visuals of his interaction with his team, who he says have worked very hard to power Nigeria. Let's take a look. The SWAG, congratulations to the Transcop Power Group. They marked 10 years, I believe, on Sunday. They've been doing very well. I mean, you cannot say that Tony Alumelu is about the most undisputed uh, CEO. Who put His traction on Instagram yes, is really traction. good. And, you know, this uh, video was quite uh, the, the video. Yes, it was. Undefeated. Undefeated. That's sung by, I think it's sung by Flavor. Yeah. Um, I watched the video on, on his Instagram page. And, and like you mentioned, first of all, congratulations to the Transcop. Yeah. Beyond the power plant in Ureli, there are other of their business um, um, ventures that yes. they've done quite well with. Also, I must um, talk about the fact that it's good to see leaders, bosses get in touch with their people. Mm -hmm. It is almost the same thing we ask of our politicians. Absolutely. In touch with the people who drive your business, who bring in the profit, and to ensure that you demonstrate you know, gratitude and give them, it's a boost to their, to their confidence. You know, even in the US military, mm -hmm. you see the president go to talk to them, um, go personally to shake their hands to thank them. It is what drives a company to excellence, and I think that's really important to mention. And I was going to also say finally that it's no mean feat to run a business, especially in the power sector in Nigeria for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And that's why perhaps they deserve double, you know, double congratulations and implications. Right. As Dr. Basin, Dr. Basin is not here. So let me just <laughs> mention the implications part of things for Absolutely. congratulations Congratula and, and well done. Huge congratulations. Uh, Rufai, you said your father did work at the Ugeli yeah, yeah, so it, 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 it's, it's nice to me. Yeah, so my dad did work at that. the Ugeli yes. power plant. Uh, Perfect. Where it, in the uh, you know the late 60s into the 70s right so, yeah fantastic again congratulations to transcor i would love to thank you both for your great analysis as always on what's trending well that's all i have for you on what's trending today i'll see you all tomorrow